Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to use Project Mark to get great graphics on powder coated or painted tumblers with a 300 millimeter lens on a fiber laser. Uh, it is super easy. You can skip the rotary tool and just mark straight onto the tumbler, uh, and that's without marking the metal and the 300 millimeter lens is what allows us to do that we're going to talk about how and why right after the intro so don't go anywhere because we're getting started right now All right, guys, so I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, and it really is a super cool one. We can take advantage of the larger depth of field on a larger field size lens, even if we don't need all that space. We can take advantage of the larger depth of field on a larger size lens to do things where we just wanna remove a coating from a metal without actually marking it. Uh, this might sound familiar because this is what we typically use a CO2 for. Tumblers are so popular on CO2 lasers because the CO2 laser is capable of removing that coating without actually marking the metal underneath. When you have a nice brushed metal underneath, it preserves that pretty brushed look. I, I'm sure you guys know this, uh, and, and it doesn't do anything to the metal. Uh, so by using a fiber laser with a large lens, our dot size gets so big uh, that it can't distribute the power in a focused enough beam to actually ablate the steel. Um, I mean, of course it can, and we'll play with the power and speed a little bit to make sure that it doesn't. But if we attempted to do the same thing with like a 110 lens, uh, the, no matter what we did, we would always be focused to such a fine point that it would be ablating the metal. And that's not what we want. We want to be in focus uh, and not ablating the metal. And we can actually reproduce that with, again, a larger lens uh, with a deeper depth of field. So we can actually project around curves. Um, and, and that's really cool. So I really want to get into it and show you what we're capable of. But first, a quick lesson on um, you know depth of field and lens sizes. So let's look at this really quick. So we're taking advantage of two different properties of large lenses today. Uh, the first is spot size. Uh, now, this slide has been taken from my everything you need to know about Galvo lasers video. It may not be out yet uh, if you're watching this video right after it comes out, but it will be out soon. Uh, when it is out, I will throw a card up in the top right corner for you to go check out that video. I highly recommend it. But uh, for now, let's just look at this slide. So over here on the left, we have an F160 110 millimeter lens, and uh, we can see a small dot size, right? Smaller lens means obviously a smaller field size, a smaller workspace. Uh, it also means a smaller dot size. We have a nice focus dot. So uh, on a 30 watt laser, for example, all 30 watts of that energy are being focused to this tiny little point right here. Uh, that small point's great for some things. It's got high power density, so we can remove a lot of material. We can do some really great ablation with a small dot size. Uh, it also means more detail. So if you're looking to do highly detailed photos, uh, maybe a smaller lens is better if you can fit it in your, in your field size there. Um, but it's not good for doing things like tumblers. Uh, with tumblers, again, we just want to remove the coating or the paint. We don't actually want to mark the metal. Usually the metal looks fairly nice. So uh, high power density is not exactly what we're looking for here. So instead, we're going to come over to this F290 200 millimeter lens. And if we take a look at the 200 millimeter lens, we can see we're getting obviously a larger workspace, right? So 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, a much larger workspace. Um, we don't really need that for tumblers, but we get the larger workspace. Um, we're also getting the larger dot size. We get slightly less detail, uh, but not enough to make doing tumblers not worth it with this lens. And uh, that larger dot size means less power density. So if you're looking for less power density, uh, a larger lens makes more sense. So um, 
we would want to use the largest lens possible to get the lowest power density so that we just have enough energy to get through that coating without actually marking the metal underneath. And that's why we're gonna be choosing a larger lens. But there's actually more to it than this. Uh, I've got another slide I wanna show you uh, because the benefits of using a large lens on a project like this are twofold. So let's go take a look at that slide. So the other key thing that's going to make a big difference uh, for our tumbler engraving with the fiber laser is depth of field. Um, you know, tumblers aren't flat, right? So it's not enough to just be removing the, uh, the, the powder coat or paint without marking the metal. We need to be able to do that consistently around a curve. Uh, and as we can see here, uh, lenses with larger workspaces have a deeper depth of field allowing you to remain in focus through greater height differentials. So that's a lot, but basically what it means is the 110 lens, anything from the top of this green box to the bottom is gonna be in focus. And that means we're gonna get a consistent mark no matter where we are uh, inside of that box. Now, uh, it's fairly shallow on a 110 millimeter lens. We're talking about millimeters, right? Um, like single digits uh, at best, uh, a couple millimeters, right? If we look over here at the F290 200 millimeter, that depth of field is much, much taller. Uh, so we can get away with a larger curve and we can go further down the curve on something like a 200 than we can on a 110. Now for this video, I'm using my 300 millimeter lens, which is the biggest one you could reasonably use. I, they make larger lenses, but uh, they're, they're kind of hard to find and they require special towers. Even in this video, um, we're gonna be using a, a very large tower and we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But um, any amount of depth of field you can add uh, to get further around the curve is going to help you in this situation. So not only does using a larger lens give us a lower power density, which means that we're less likely to ablate the metal while we're removing the coating, uh, it also gives us a greater depth of field, which means we can go further around the curve without actually marking the metal. Uh, and these are two really key concepts when we're trying to do this kind of work. So I just wanted to take a second and touch on them. There's some other things we're gonna have to keep in mind that I don't have fancy graphics for, so we're just gonna have to do it in person. So here we are in front of our fiber laser station, and you can see that I've got two different sized towers on both of these machines. Uh, this is the 30 watt Mactron laser over here, and this is the 60 watt M7 from SFX, and I've actually upgraded the tower on the 60 watt SFX to be able to give us more height. The reason why we would wanna do this is because we need to actually be able to focus to our curved surface. Here's the 300 millimeter lens for the M7, and it's gigantic. And if we try to put this on, we can see it's much too short. We can go ahead and raise our focal height here, uh, and we can get that in focus, and it's easy. Um, if we do this same setup on the other side, we're gonna have trouble focusing this, and I'll show you that right now. So over here at the 30 watt Mactron, uh, the focus is as high as it can go. The cup is sitting right on the bed, and I cannot get this actually to focus. Um, the good news is we will still be able to mark this cup, even though it's a little bit sketchy, um, we'll, we'll be able to make it happen with the 300 millimeter lens, but we can never actually truly appropriately focus with the 500 millimeter tower. Uh, the good news is the towers are easy to swap out. You just pull a couple bolts from the bottom of the bed here uh, and the four bolts that keep the tower affixed to the, uh, the bed and it swaps right out. Uh, it's, it's very quick and easy to swap in a taller tower. The standard size again for towers is 500 millimeters, that's 50 centimeters. Uh, and the expanded one that's very common is the 800 millimeter or 80 centimeter tower. So uh, just something to keep in mind, if you're using a 300 millimeter lens or larger, an 800 millimeter tower could make a huge difference just as far as usability goes uh, with these kind of lenses. So that was the last thing I wanted to cover before we moved on. So we're ready to get started here, guys, and we're just gonna grab some artwork really quick. Uh, just something that we're gonna put on our bottle 
We're gonna size it. Uh, for sizing, you can get away with as large as 65 millimeters I've tested uh, on like a standard tumbler. We're gonna go with 60 for now and let's just check out some of our hatch settings. So uh, hatch one, we're gonna do 90 degrees. Uh, line spacing of 0 0.025, just like we always do. And we wanna use the bi-directional hatch. Uh, same thing for hatch number two, but this angle is gonna be zero degrees. And we'll talk about why in a minute. Also make sure hatch three is disabled. We definitely don't want anything on that. And again, we're gonna start with 90 degrees first. And that's because the grain of the metal underneath the powder coat usually goes from left to right. Uh, we want to make sure that we are marking against that grain first so that if we do happen to ablate the metal, uh, the zero degrees will come in and mark along the grain again. It'll hide any kind of ablation mistakes that we have. So with that hatched, uh, we are ready to move on to the next step. And let's talk about settings real quick. So for the 60 watt M7, I like a speed of 900 uh, and we're gonna do a power of 45 and a frequency of 50. And I like these settings because they allow everybody to do this. Uh, whether you have a Rakus or a JPT, you're gonna be able to use these settings. Uh, I know there's a lot of high frequency issues with a lot of people who don't have sources that are capable of that. So I wanted to make sure that everybody could use these settings. If we zoom out here, we can get rid of this graphic and let's just do a vertical line. We're gonna start our alignment here. This vertical line is gonna allow us to make sure that our Yeti is nice and straight. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pop that in and let's light that up so that we can actually see Oh, we did gotta select that. We have mark selected, checked. Uh, let's light that up so we can see what that looks like. And here's the Yeti. Uh, I'm just gonna take a moment here and make sure that it's nice and straight. Uh, you know, this isn't anything crazy here. We just wanna get it as straight as possible from top to bottom. Uh, that way our graphic looks really nice on our tumbler. Now that it's nice and straight, we can delete the line. We don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of that line. There we go, uh, junk that, goodbye and uh, we're going to light the graphic now. So let's get the graphic selected and light that. And with it selected, we just wanna make sure our positioning is good. Uh, you don't wanna make sure that the left side or the right side of the graphic is too far around the curve. You want them to be equal distance uh, down the sides of the cup. Otherwise, one may get rid of all of the powder coat where the other one doesn't. Once you're pretty sure that you've gotten everything more or less straight, uh, we can go ahead and just focus real quick. Honestly, we probably should have done this first, but here we are, we're focusing. And I like to focus about three quarters of the way down the curve. Uh, I used to say half, but three quarters is a little more accurate. So somewhere right about here uh, is looking perfect and our focus is set. So we're, we're very close to marking now. So the last thing we need to do is just check some easy CAD settings. We can get rid of mark select and continuous. We don't need those anymore. And uh, let's just double check our hatches, make sure that all looks good. Uh, nothing's changed, so that's good there. And let's pop open project mark. Uh, there's a couple settings in here. Uh, the main ones that we wanna pay attention to are the orientation. So just make sure that you have the right image selected based on the way your tumbler is sitting. If you have your tumbler sideways, maybe you're doing uh, text up the length, that would be a good one. But we're doing our cup up and down, so we wanna make sure that we are rotating around the uh, y-axis there. And next, we wanna make sure our focal length is right. This number, uh, 457, is the length of our actual focal distance. Our, our focal stick, if we had one, would be this number. And we wanna make sure we put in the right part diameter. Uh, this tumbler is 76.4 millimeters in diameter, so we'll enter that here. And with all of that done, all that we have left to do is actually mark this thing. So uh, here it is. We'll go ahead and press F2, and it's gonna start marking. We'll see it's going to start with our 90 degree hatch first, uh, and that's going to get rid of the big base of, of powder coat. And then the zero degree will kind of act as like a cleanup and uh, clean up whatever leftovers might be left on there. So uh, this takes a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up for you and then I will check in with you when it's done for cleaning. And here it is, guys. It's looking done. Uh, you know, 90% of that powder coat is going to appear gone. It's not gonna be perfectly clean. We're still gonna have to clean this up the good old fashioned way with a little bit of alcohol and Zep degreaser. 
So as is customary, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of 90% alcohol here. The bottle says 70, but I use 99%. Uh, I, I refill this container. And we're gonna just give it a scrub uh, really quick, get most of that gunk off, and the degreaser is going to take care of the rest of whatever is left over. I'm really putting some elbow grease into this. You, you kind of got to scrub them, but we're doing this with a, a fiber laser, project mark with a fiber laser. That's really cool. So uh, it's, it's worth a little extra effort. So here we go now with the degreaser, just a quick spritz on there and uh, we'll give it a nice quick wipe uh, just to get that shine back on that metal. And that is looking really, really nice guys. It's looking really, really nice. Let's hop over to the main camera and I'll show you how it looks over there. So here it is guys, if I can get it to focus, a nice close up on the results there. Uh, a tiny little bit of powder coat left over, nothing too bad. Uh, we could probably bump our power up a couple points to deal with that. It's not gonna hurt the metal because we are using this larger field size lens. It's giving us that deeper depth of field. So we can afford to do a little more power output uh, on this piece, but look at that. I mean, that looks so good and we were able to project it around the cup. This is definitely not something you'd be able to do with a smaller lens. Just to show you guys, uh, we can do this with the 30 watt Mactron as well. Really quick, we're just gonna come in here and increase our power to 95%. Uh, we are gonna be on the 30 watt here, so we need to bump that way up. Our speed and frequency are gonna stay the same. Focus is the same, uh, everything else is gonna be identical. And with that marked, we're gonna give it the same exact cleaning treatment. Again, this is on the 30 watt Mactron laser. So a quick scrubbing with the alcohol and a little bit more Zep just to shine it up. And here are the final results. This was with the 30 watt Mactron. It's actually gonna be a little easier with a lower powered laser, believe it or not, because we don't need to worry so much about ablating the metal. We've got even less power behind that large field size lens. And that means less of a chance that we're going to ablate. So pretty great results there. And that's that guys, we're done. Uh, it's obviously, you know, just like everything else that we do here on Laser Everything, and I know I say this every week, but it's super true. Uh, you're gonna have to dial in your settings a little bit. They're gonna be a little bit more, a little bit less than mine, a little bit faster, a little bit slower, uh, but you should be able to accomplish this with pretty much any system. Uh, we did it on the 30 watt Mactron with the limited 500 millimeter tower. We did it on the 60 watt uh, M7 SFX laser and that was no problem at all. Uh, and it, it can be done. Uh, we even did the worst color, like red. I mean, uh, red and white really are the two worst colors, but I purposefully recorded this episode with a red tumbler because they are notoriously a big pain in the butt. Shout out to Tyler for finally lighting the fire under my butt to uh, get this episode done. Thanks, Tyler. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it, guys. All you need really is a 300 millimeter lens. A couple things can make this a little easier, like having a larger tower. But um, if you have a 300 millimeter lens, you're in good shape to start using Project Mark to mark powder coated items uh, without a rotary tool. And I think that is pretty cool. Did you like this episode? Are you happy with the results? If you are and you got something out of it, please smash the like button, uh, show everybody else that the content is awesome, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time I upload a video. If you love the channel and it's the best thing that ever happened to you, consider signing up for the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support the channel and it helps me to continue doing what I love, teaching you guys about lasers, producing new content, just like all kinds of stuff. Uh, and, and I really do love doing this. And it's thanks to our awesome supporters over there at the Laser Master Academy. You get some bonus goodies for signing up. We have bonus episodes of the podcast, uh, bonus LMA exclusive live streams. Uh, we live stream like doing just normal, typical day-to-day -day work uh, here at the shop and kind of going through things together, which is really awesome. And the community is amazing. Uh, everybody over there is really friendly and super willing to help out. Uh, even if I'm not immediately available. We've got Kyle roaming around over there now answering everybody's questions. Uh, it's an awesome place to be. If you need a new tower for your laser, maybe if you want to go from a 50 centimeter tower to an 80 centimeter tower, I've got links to those down in the description. Shopping via those links helps support the channel as well. And uh, speaking of awesome communities, don't forget to check out the Discord and brand new Facebook group. There's links to both of those down in the description. They are awesome, super amazing communities filled with amazing people. Uh, and I'm just 
just so proud still to this day of everybody who participates in the Laser Everything community. You guys rock. Thank you for being there for the newbies. Thank you for being patient with the new questions. Uh, if you need help, seriously, that's the place to go. Uh, again, links to both of those down in the description for you. And I think that's it. I think that's everything for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me for a little bit. And I will see you in the next one.